In this video, we're going to take another look at elementary row operations and show that they are actually linear operators. Now, if we think about it, it's right there in its name. It says operations. So what, what does an operation? An operator. So let's verify that type 1 elementary row operations are indeed linear operators. So type 1, if you remember, just replaces a row of a matrix with some scalar times that row. And to think about this correctly, because normally we think about uh, elementary row operations working on matrices, and we think of operators working on column vectors. So let's just think of a matrix as a column vector of rows. So as an example, if I have this matrix which has three columns, I'm sorry, two columns, three rows, uh, I'm just going to treat each row then as its own vector. And now, I wish I could come up with a better way of saying this, but I'm using a capital E to represent the elementary row operation. And I put two subscripts on this because what are we doing? We're the elementary row operation of type 1 is going to replace a row of the matrix with a scalar times that row. So I need to tell you which row. It's going to be called J. J is the uh, index of the row. And alpha is the scalar being multiplied by that row. So again, capital E, normally we've been using a T, but since it's an elementary row operation, we're using a capital E instead of a capital T to represent a transformation. So remember, a transformation has to have two properties in order to be a linear transformation. And since we're going to go from the same space to the same space, it's going to be a linear operator. So the first property is additivity. So in general, we'd be working on row j, but there's nothing special about row 2, and it just makes it easier to write everything down. So without loss of generality, we can just look at our analysis assuming that we are scaling row 2. And so we're going to say, well, we've got two different inputs, A and B. The rows of A are going to be represented by vectors R1 through Rn. The rows of B are represented by vectors S1 through Sn. And how do you add two matrices? You can add the corresponding rows. And so additivity would say that if I take my elementary row operation, apply it to A, apply it to B, and apply it to the sum, the output from applying it to the sum should be the sum of the outputs applying it to each individual matrix. Right? So the uh, image of the sum should be the sum of the images. And it's pretty easy to see. We just have to look at the uh, image of the sum. We can go ahead and distribute the alpha to the R2 and the S2, and then break that up into two. And we can see then that each one of these, the first one, is the image of A, and the second one is the image of B under this transformation. So we've established additivity. Now I recognize that this is a bit uh, heavy on notation, uh, but there's a point to it. And the next part, which is homogeneity, is uh, a, little, a little bit easier to understand. So let's just take the, a look at homogeneity. Uh, so again, what are we doing? We are uh, replacing a row of the matrix with alpha times that row. And again, we'll just 
uh, work with the second row in our analysis here. So we've got a, a real number, we've got only one matrix. Its rows are represented by these vectors R1 through Rn. And if I multiply a matrix times a scalar, that's equivalent to multiplying every row by that scalar. And so if I apply our transformation to k times a, well, again, I'm just going to multiply the second, the second row by alpha. Now, of course, I can factor out the k. The alpha stays in there. And sure enough, that is going to be k times e sub alpha 2 applied to just the matrix A. And so that establishes homogeneity. And that was kind of abstract, a lot of work, a lot of notation to show that that particular elementary row operation was a linear operator. And there should be an easier way. And of course there is. We're going to rely on this theorem that a, transfer, a transformation is a linear transformation if and only if you can find a matrix which uh, has the same action as the linear operator. So in other words, the matrix multiplication does the same as applying the transformation or operator in our case. So if we can find a matrix which, when you multiply by that matrix, you get the same output as if you were uh, applying a linear, I mean, sorry, a elementary row operation, then we've established that the elementary row operation is indeed a linear operator. So let's define what we're going to call an elementary matrix. An elementary matrix is the matrix that you get by applying a single elementary row operation to the identity matrix. So, for example, if I do a uh, type 1 elementary row operation where I replace the first row with three times the first row, and I apply that to the 3 by 3 identity matrix, then I get an elementary matrix here. I have, um, it looks almost like an identity matrix, but now the one in the first row has been replaced by three. And so why do we care about these elementary matrices? Because if we multiply a matrix on the left by an elementary matrix, you get the same output as if you had applied the elementary row operation. If I take this matrix that looks like the identity except for the number three, I multiply by this example here. The result of the multiplication is that I have multiplied the first row of the original matrix by 3. So this elementary matrix, when I multiply it times a, a matrix, performs the same action as the corresponding elementary row operation. And so that's true of all types of elementary row operations, not just type 1. Type 2, if you recall, is a swap. So if I swap the second and third rows of the identity matrix, I get this matrix. And if I multiply it times a matrix, here again I'm representing a matrix here as a column vector of rows. and um, the result is that I'm going to swap the corresponding rows. And the same thing with the type 3, where I replace one row with the sum of that row plus a multiple of a different row. And again, it performs that operation by multiplication. And so, since I can represent each action or the action of each type of ERO by a matrix multiplication, I've established that uh, elementary row operations are indeed linear operators. And it was a lot less work than going through and showing that it had uh, additivity and homogeneity.
So let's take the time and look at the geometric interpretation of all of the elementary row operations on R2. So with R2, um, you are uh, dealing with uh, two by two matrices. Uh, and in fact, you're starting with the two by two identity matrix, you're applying an elementary row operation. So uh, quite frankly, you can just break them down into five uh, possibilities. Two for type one, there's only one type two, and two for type three. So in type one, we can either scale the first row by a factor, or we can scale the second row. If we scale the first row, uh, and I multiply that times just a generic vector x, y, uh, my output's going to be uh, kx, comma, y. In other words, all this elementary row operation does is multiply the x component by that scale factor. So if I start with vectors in R2, and I look at their uh, x component. So here, again, remember, uh, we can be thinking of these as points or as, the, as position vectors. And so um, if I think of them as points, then all I'm doing is multiplying the x coordinate by, well, here, the factor is 2. So I multiply each x coordinate by 2. And so uh, this point now would have a new uh, old x coordinate is 1. Its new x coordinate is 2. And these points have an x coordinate of 2. And now they're going to have an x coordinate of 4. And then uh, once I've got all the corners, I can just connect them. Of course, the points with x coordinate of 0 remain having an x coordinate of 0. But once I've found the new coordinates of all the corners, I can just connect the corners with straight lines because I know that an uh, linear transformation will map lines onto lines. If I have a type 1 elementary row operation where we've scaled the second row, that's the equivalent of just scaling the y component or the y coordinate. So now my shape here gets stretched vertically. Every y coordinate gets multiplied by 2. And here I'm using a factor, I'm sorry, a factor of 3. So they're being multiplied by 3. So the old y coordinate of this point was 1. Then the new one, new y coordinate is 3. And the old y coordinate of this point uh, was 2. And the new one is up here at 6. There's only one type 2 ERO. You can either swap rows 1 and row 2 or row 2 and row 1. It's the same swap. And so if I do that to the 2 by 2 identity matrix, I get this uh, anti-diagonal matrix. So it has uh, ones along the anti-diagonal instead of the main diagonal. And the result of multiplying by that matrix is that you're going to interchange the x and y components or the x and y coordinates. And so uh, if I start with a particular set and I interchange the x and y coordinates, then what I get is the reflection of that point or that set of points in the line y equals x. So we're left with the type 3 ERO's. Uh, that's where I could take, for example, uh, row 1 and replace it with row 1 plus k times row 2. And so then I get this uh, matrix. We call this a triangular matrix uh, where we have uh, a 1. Uh, so 1's along the diagonal. And then you have the k in the upper right-hand corner. And so what happens here is that the x-coordinates are moved. And they're not scaled. The x-coordinates are not scaled, but they are moved 
by a factor of their y coordinate. So they really are moved based on how far they are from the x-axis. The further a point is from the x-axis, the further it gets moved. So again, we're here we're working with a shear factor of so a k value of 2. And so this point is 2 units away from the x-axis, or its y-coordinate is 2. So it's going to move 2 times 2, 4 units to the right. So it starts at 1, so 1, 2, 3, and then next up there. Yeah, it looks like this should go further out. And then this one has a y coordinate of 2. So it should be moving 4 units over as well. So my picture's off a little bit. Uh, this point, I think, is correct because it is 1 unit from the x axis or has a y coordinate of 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And so it's going to move over two units. So uh, I did uh, my, my drawing is off there. I have to fix that later. Now this one I think is correct. Uh, here now we've uh, replaced the second row with the second row plus k times the first row. And so now we're going to be moving the y coordinate a distance which is proportional to its the product of the x coordinate and the factor the shear factor so here I used a shear factor of 2.5 and so uh, for example this point is one unit from the y-axis so it, or its x coordinate is one so it should move up 2.5 and yeah I've got that one correct 2.5 and then this, these points here have a, an x-coordinate of 2, so they should be moving 5 points up. And indeed, that part is correct. So we'll look at more geometric interpretations of uh, elementary row operations in our next video.